Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In this session, we're going to discuss the LT frame structure. We're going to start by looking at the downlink frame structure. We'll then have a look at the uplink, and then we'll follow on with a view of TDD operation. So when we start looking at the downlink, the first thing we need to think about is the LT channel itself. So we've got a center frequency here, and LT will be deployed either on a 5, a 10, a 15, or a 20 megahertz channel, or possibly something lower. If we just choose the 5 megahertz option, we'll find that that has a certain bandwidth. Now, based on the LT system, what's going to happen is we're going to have a number of subcarriers in there, and those subcarriers are going to make resource blocks. So if we looked at a 5 megahertz channel, what we would actually be looking at is 25 resource blocks. So this is the frequency component. And then we go over time. Now, the LT air interface is split into what's called frames and subframes. The subframe lasts a millisecond. So obviously there are 10 subframes within a frame, and a frame lasts 10 milliseconds. Now, each of these subframes is given a number. So you can see here, number 0 to 9 is identifying the subframes. What we now need to think about is the downlink frame structure, because that in the uplink and downlink looks the same. What happens then is we allocate the channels to the downlink or the channels to the uplink. If you were to look at the downlink frame, you'll find these strips of control information. This control information is scheduling information for the downlink, scheduling our downlink channels, as well as the uplink scheduling, uplink users effectively. Now in the downlink frame structure, we'd also expect to find some synchronization. Specifically, the primary and secondary synchronization occurs in subframe 0 and subframe 5. In addition, in subframe 0, we'll find the MIB, the master information block, with some basic system information message being sent down towards the users in the cell. As far as the allocation is concerned, the control channel, the scheduler in the downlink, those brown strips, are going to schedule users. So a user might be scheduled some resources within a subframe, and that might be ongoing so that in different subframes they can be allocated resources. A different user can be allocated different resources. As far as the uplink subframe is concerned, it looks very similar, as in you've got a similar 25 resource blocks and you've got the same frame with 10 subframes. However, the allocation process, the scheduling is based on the downlink control, scheduling users in the uplink. And the key thing is when you schedule a user, you'll schedule them some resources. And specifically there, you can see some strips. And these strips actually are to do with something called demodulation reference signals or DRS signals. So these are uplink reference signals. And this is used by the ENOB so that it can correlate the signals at the base station. Finally, I just want to talk about TDD, TDD time division duplex. In time division duplex, we only have one frame structure, but we configure the different resources for uplink or downlink based on the time of the subframe. So what you'll find is there are different configurations. So an ENOB will be configured, for example, with configuration number two. And configuration number two, as you can see, denotes that we have a number of D, downlink frames, S, special frames, and U, uplink frames. So you can see that that particular configuration goes down, a special frame, up, and then there's three more downs, a special frame, up, and two more downs. So the idea is we need a special frame when we go from down to up. And that's to do with something called timing advance and the trying to mitigate interference. If you go from up to down, so one subframe is up and the next one is down, we don't need a special frame. So in this particular instance, we've got downlink frames, two uplink frames, and obviously two special frames. So it's quite asymmetric. There's more going in the down than in the uplink direction. Obviously, the different configurations provide for different configurations of asymmetric allocation. So how this would look, if we looked at the configuration number two, this is called frame type two, by the way. So frame type one is FDD. Frame type two is really TDD. 
And in this particular example, I'm using the scenario of configuration number two, where the first subframe zero was a downlink. We then had a special frame. So I really want to talk about what's in these special subframes. In the special subframe, the first thing to spot is there's a guard period in blue there. So that's to do with providing an opportunity where no one's going to obviously overlap. We also have what's called a downlink pilot time slot and an uplink pilot time slot. Now, we can't allocate the full subframe in the downlink or the uplink, so we have a small period there. And that does carry information, so information can go in the uplink and the downlink pilot time slots. So in summary, we've identified that we have a radio frame. It lasts 10 milliseconds. The bandwidth, 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 15, denotes the amount of resource blocks you're going to have. And the idea is, in the downlink frame, we're going to allocate users a number of these resource blocks. We're going to use scheduling, the control scheduling, to schedule downlink as well as uplink resources. There's also synchronization and the master information block that we expect to see in the downlink frame. I will point out there are other detailed aspects of the frame that we'll get to in other videos. The uplink frame is slightly different in terms of you, yes, allocate resources to users, but what you'll find is the allocation that you give the user, the user will include what's called demodulation reference signals, allowing it to, or the ENOB, to lock onto that signal, do the correct estimation of the channel, and obviously decode it. And then finally, we've identified that we have a TDD configuration option as well, which uses a similar concept of downlink an uplink, except now it's time-based and we have to have a different configuration option to say how symmetrical or asymmetrical we want to be in terms of which subframes are down, which subframes are up, and which subframes are special subframes. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.